Out of the Ordinary Insights, brought to you by Investec Specialist Bank. Hello and a warm welcome to Captains of Industry. I'm Bronwyn Nielsen. Joining me in the studio this week is the man at the helm of Ultron, CEO Robbie Fenter. Thanks very much for Hi, your time. Bronwyn. Let's start with the current environment in South Africa. Obviously, with your exposure to the consumer uh, very, through Netstar and Autopage Cellular, you've got quite a good indication of, of what is happening on the ground. Can you share some insights on that front? Yeah, I think um, on, on the consumer side, uh, things are relatively healthy as far as consumer spending is, is concerned. Um, both of those markets that you referred to are maturing markets. Um, so the, 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 the business conditions remain uh, challenging in those areas. Um, cost control remains a, a key focus in those areas. Um, but overall, we're, we're happy with the performance that we're getting out of our consumer facing businesses. In terms of the group, I was doing a little research and obviously you're looking forward to the time when all your companies are firing on one cylinder because over the last six to seven years, you've had different players within the Ultron group taking the lead at various stages. And obviously here we're talking about power tech, we're talking about Altec, and we're talking about Bytes. Bytes at the moment is the star in the group. Do you think that's sustainable? Um, I think so. Um, I think that uh, Bytes has come off a, a reasonably high base. Um, we've um, done quite a few good things in the banking space and the retail space on the IT side, which uh, are longer term type contracts. So uh, we're fairly comfortable that the, the outlook for Bytes looks reasonably good going forward. Um, and really, the, the, the recovery is really a, a story at both Altec and, and at Powertech. Both of those businesses have, uh, have underperformed over the past uh, couple of years. Um, but as you say, you know, we, we go through these cycles where uh, we have uh, four or five years ago, Powertech was the start, was the largest contributor to our group during the, the boom in infrastructure uh, spending. Um, then as the recession hit, uh, Powertech was hit quite hard um, and Altec really, because of its strong annuity income, held up very well in the early part of the recession. Um, and uh, unfortunately now, um, Bytes has, uh, has had the opportunity to be the biggest contributor. So I, like you, uh, look forward to the day that uh, all three are, are firing on all cylinders. Let's focus on Altec for a moment and, and the troubles you're having mostly in East Africa. Have you taken the necessary remedial action? Uh, Bronwyn, it's a, it's a very challenging market there uh, right now. We don't see any real quick fixes there. Um, so really our focus is really on uh, getting back to a sustainable um, long-term recovery uh, process there. Uh, we've had to take some uh, dramatic action in terms of costs um, in East Africa. Uh, unfortunately, that's resulted in um, some job losses uh, up in East Africa, but a necessary um, action uh, given the market demand and uh, the pressure that that market faces, particularly in uh, in pricing. The pricing for bandwidth has, has dropped significantly with the, the introduction of uh, a number of undersea cables um, and as a result of that uh, um, there's a little bit of a price war going on in that market and, and one has to accept that you can't change the external side so you have to do what you have to do internally to make the business sustainable. But, but you're not going to pull out of East Africa? Well we're not, we're not, we don't have any plans to pull out of East Africa right now. Um, I think what we have said is that uh, we, we would entertain partnerships. We are looking at, at various partnerships in that uh, in that region with partners that uh, can add value from a from a, a network operation perspective or by bringing f further business or, 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 or revenues to the company just in terms of your having been quoted as saying that you would welcome less entry points into the group and perhaps the de delisting of Altec is one of those opportunities is that on the cards it's something that we, we constantly have a look at and, and review. Um, I, I still do believe um, from, from my perspective and I think from our board's perspective that the long-term strategy must be to have one uh, listed entry point for the Ultron Group. It, it has many, many benefits um, if you have a look at that. Uh, not First of all, capital allocation will be more efficient, uh, but also the, the, the ability to obtain synergies between the Bytes operation and the Altec operations, which are in converging IT and telecom space um, will be much easier and much more possible um, uh, in, in a one listed uh, entry point group. Um, so that still is our, our long term goal. Uh, but we have to be able to do something that financially works for both the Altec shareholders and also works for the Altron shareholders. Um, obviously, uh, we don't want to do something that's going to be dilutive to the Altron shareholders. And the Altec shareholders on the, on the other side of the fence is looking, are looking for a premium on their, on their share so price. So it's going to be a complicated negotiation exactly. process yeah. down the line. Yeah. Robbie, 
let's chat about power tech now and obviously the cabling business under pressure, specifically with your exposure to Iberia, Portugal, Spain, not territories right now that many businesses want exposure to given the turmoil that we're seeing out of that territory. I see one of your remedial actions has been to try and export beyond those territories into wider Europe. Yeah. Is that bearing fruition? Yeah, so just to put it into context, uh, you know, our cable business is our largest business in, in, uh, in, in Powertech. Um, the South African cable businesses, although not performing to where we would want them to be, have certainly shown a, a pickup and a, and a nice turnaround from, say, a year ago. So we're seeing the recovery in the South African context. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we do have some exposure in Spain and Portugal. Um, it's not large. It's about 3% of, uh, of revenue. So it's, it's, a, it's a smaller part of the group, but obviously a very troubled area. Um, Spain, uh, we don't see that economy picking up uh, very quickly. Uh, as much as I think most economists would agree yeah, with you on I th that. I don't think uh, uh, it'll too controversial a statement that, but uh, um, so really for, for us, um, it's finding markets outside of Spain. And um, we have had some success in that area uh, with uh, three main customers, uh, British Telecom, Telecom, uh, France Telecom, and Ircom, the, the telecoms company in Ireland. Um, we've been able to pick up work in that area, and uh, and hopefully that's going to um, allow us to 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 keep going uh, in a profitable way there. But you are going to stay steadfast. Perhaps the same question I was asking about East Africa. There's no intention to pull out. I think we in Portugal we would be looking to uh, possibly revise our business model. Uh, maybe we will manufacture less in Portugal and manufacture more in some of the other areas within the within the group, um, thereby diminishing our, our, our risk profile and our cost in, in, in that particular market. Um, but uh, I don't think there's a whole host of, uh, of, of interested buyers out in, in the market uh, looking to enter um, Spain and Portugal right now, especially with businesses that are facing um, construction industry uh, troubles and the, and the like. So we've got to dig deep and, and get through uh, the, the tough economic times there. But as I said, relatively smaller part of our overall business. Bytes has been a very successful acquisition for you and uh, certainly yielding results. Do you think sustainable, the current performance? Yeah, I think so. I think that uh, we're really very pleased with what we've seen out of, out of Bytes. Um, and the, the IT market in South Africa is growing at about 9%, 10% a year. So there, there is underlying growth. And if we can combine, if we can grow in line with the market and we can get a little bit of market share, um, that's, that gives you an opportunity to grow your revenues and your profits in the, in the double digits, which is obviously what we'd like to do. Do you cross-pollinate between your businesses? or do they really operate as separate entities? Yeah, this is really one of the biggest challenges that we often have in the group, um, to try and maximize the, the scale of the group and the, and the synergies that are available within the group, but by the same token, get the best out of a federated business model. We tend to run a federated business model. Um, we can hold people accountable, management accountable for their results in that environment, but the downside of that is often that they become very insular and very silo focused in terms of their business. They don't see any merit in, in looking for synergies within the group. So we, we do put in some various incentive programs to, to help people to, to think the way we would want them to think and, uh, and to get the benefits going across but the But it's a hot group. internal debate. But it's not, a, it's not an easy decision and it's not, it doesn't easily happen. Um, uh, you, you, you can always do a better job of that. Would you look for other acquisitions? Are you looking for other acquisitions? Uh, you know, our group without is giving away any information that you can't. Sure. Now, our group has, over the years, has been built on acquisitions. So acquisitions remain a, a core part of our our future philosophy. I think um, in today's economic time, one has to be more cautious than uh, aggressive in terms of that because it's easy to to get pricing wrong, which is one of the the, the big failings of, of failed acquisitions. Is often you've paid too much for the business. It's easy to get pricing wrong because the the visibility in terms of profitability isn't quite what you would want it to be right now. So um, to answer your question, we absolutely are looking uh, at acquisitions, um, but we're looking at it very cautiously and um, we, we, we won't just do deals just for the sake of doing deals, but if they make good sense for the, the group and, and we can get them uh, at the right price, uh, we'd certainly look at that. I think our focus probably more at LTEC and at, at Bytes in terms of acquisitions, whereas PowerTech, um, uh, it's more of an internal focus right now.
Robbie, there's a lot of noise about where the world is right now, and certainly one thing for sure is that we're going to face a lot of uncertainty down the line. How are you feeling about things? Are you sleeping easy during the evenings or the nights, rather, um, or are you battling with what ultimately is happening in the world? Well, I think um, if we go back uh, four or five years, obviously we were all sleeping a lot easier than what, uh, than what we are right now. Um, however, uh, I like to look at the glass half full rather than half empty. I think there are lots of problems around the world and Eurozone is, is, is probably number one in, 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 in that particular area. Um, but South Africa, often I think we don't give ourselves the credit that we need to. Um, you know, our economy is going to, people argue, is going to grow at 2.5% or 3%. Um, there's many other countries around the world that would give their eye teeth to have that kind of an economic situation. So um, I think we're in a good space in being in South Africa with the bulk of our businesses. We just need to make sure that our international side keeps itself together, East Africa and Iberia. And there are challenges in those areas, but the core business in South Africa, I'm, I'm reasonably optimistic that... Uh, there's good things to come. Um, you know, government's uh, announcements um, uh, in terms of infrastructure spend bodes well for power tech. Um, I think there's, there's some good opportunities still in, in, in the southern Africa region. Do you see yourself as an Afro-optimist? Um, well, ha having burnt our fingers somewhat going into Africa, um, I, I think we're a bit more cautious today than what we were a few years back. But if one looks at the fundamentals, one looks at the economic opportunities and, and the, the, a lot of the other macroeconomic fundamentals around Africa, it is really the growth engine for the world for, uh, going forward. Um, the Eurozone is not going to come back. Asia is already growing. The U.S. is, is, is having cha challenges. And a lot of people are looking to Africa as being the, the, the last territory um, to conquer. Um, so that does make it quite competitive, but it does provide great opportunities. Um, and the conditions in Africa, let's face it, are, are, are difficult. It's not an easy market to deal in. You need, you need to have um, special skills to be able to, to manage businesses in Africa. And have you, as you've said, challenges in East Africa has that really clouded your vision when it comes to West Africa because everybody obviously talks of Nigeria Ghana these hot economies that there sort of seems to be no stopping them. yeah yeah you know we have a small business in uh, Nigeria through our Altec operation which we've announced we're, we're exiting from um, and that's not so much a, a, a vote of lack of confidence in the region it's more the nature of the business it's become a, a more commoditized type of business and and we tend to want to focus more on services and more on annuity income and so we've taken the decision to exit our um, our, our telephone recharge um, a voucher business up in in Nigeria um, but as I said, not a vote of lack of confidence in the region. I think uh, if, if, if opportunities present themselves there, we certainly would uh, be looking there as well. We're going to a short commercial break. More with Ultron's Robbie Fenter when we return.